Thank you, Dale. Good morning. How's everyone doing today? That's weak. It's summer. Good morning. How's everybody doing today? I can't think of a better start to summer than to get a hot dog and a cheeseburger and some mac salad. Can someone say amen? That's, so I take advantage of that. We are so thankful. I just want to say thank you to all the volunteers, including the young people, but um, to all our volunteers who signed up, who are helping make Cookout for Camp. I have never heard of being just kind of our first year uh, a part of this where kids can, uh, in some cases, almost their whole camp get paid for, for us as a church to send them to camp. How cool is that? How amazing is that? So I just want to say thank you. So after church, it's beautiful weather. Um, go and grab a cheeseburger, donate, be a part of that. So we're in week four of the Blessed Life series. My name is John. I'm the youth and discipleship pastor here. If you are new, we are so glad you are here. So thankful for you. We pray that uh, you would be blessed today. And th thank you to everyone coming out for church today online or here. And the question I want to ask you real quick as we get started, we're going to go to the video in a second, uh, is how, how hard is it for you to give? That's the question. How hard is it for you to give? There's been times in my marriage in different places that giving is something you have to revisit, right? It's something that you, you think you got it right, or you're like, man, I got this down, and God kind of wrecks your world or challenges you. I, rem I remember even very early in my marriage when I'd recently taken a job at a church. This is when I, I was just out of Elam, very young. And I kind of had this thought to myself in the back of my head, and this wasn't a, a good thought, just, just to be clear. It was, it was God, I, I felt, God, I'm giving all my time, 50 you know, hours a week to church, I'm volunteering, you know, tithing, you know, I, I'm kind of, I'm giving my whole life as a gift. I mean, do I really have to tithe, God? I remember telling, you were talking to my wife about this, my wife's like, yes, we have to tithe, yes. She's the smarter one. But I bring that up and kind of, I bring up like a, a real situation in my life and wrestling with something just to kind of, Ask that hard question. How hard is it for you to give? Many of us, when we talk about giving, you have preset ideas and you kind of, you know, you kind of dig in. You know what you think. And I would ask that right now in a second, I'm just going to pray that you would allow God, the Holy Spirit, to speak to you, to be open. And again, this series isn't about what we can get from you, but about what you can, what you can get. And I believe God wants to speak to us, and I believe the Holy Spirit wants to maybe uh, wrestle with some things and, and kind of talk to you and, and speak to you about some different things in your life. So let's pray. Dear Lord, I thank you for this morning. I thank you for the beautiful weather. God, that you're always speaking. You're never done with us, God. And Father, we want to be a generous people. And so God, we ask that you would just work on us today. Those of us who have been Christians for a long time or have been Christians for day one, God, you want to do work in our hearts. And Father, that you would come that we would be open, regardless of how we feel right now, God, that we would, we would say, Lord, would you speak? In Jesus' name, amen. And so I asked that question, how hard is it for you to give? For some of you, <clears throat> you, th you say, yeah, giving is really easy. I love it because it's, I get so much joy out of giving. Others, maybe, again, you're watching online or you think about giving, and it's, it's a difficult topic. You're saying, you know, you're saying, well, Pastor, you know, right now we're having a very difficult time financially. Look at the price of gas and our grocery bill and all the different things that uh, rent and all the different things that have gone up. It's, it's a very, it's a tough time. <clears throat> and maybe you're here and you're saying, well, you know, my parents didn't show me a life of giving. They weren't the, the most generous people. And, and, and that's kind of where you're at right now. If you're just being honest, as I was honest with you just a minute ago. But our God is a giver, amen? In every way. And, and whether our parents instilled in us the principle of giving or not, our Father wants us to do it now. And this is the principle we were going after with the reverse offering just a few weeks ago. We did a reverse offering where we gave $20, $40, or $60 in an envelope simply for the purpose of giving it away. Some of you are saying, I told you we should have gone to church a few weeks ago, right? <laughs> should have went to church that day. Um, my plan, our plan at the church was that it would help us to be more like our father and that would help us practice generosity. It would reveal to us in a practical way uh, that just like the money that was given to us simply to give it away, neither is, is the money that we have in our bank accounts is, is really ours, right? And we begin, you see that. 
Everything belongs to God. And so I just want to real quick highlight a few. We have opportunities for you with the new here card to, to give us a testimony or to share with us what God is doing in your life. You can also go online to do that. But here's a, a quick testimony. I was really excited about knocking someone's socks off with the $40 reverse offering. But to be honest, life challenges, including the death of my family and work drama and deadlines, preoccupied my brain. On Saturday evening, I still had the money uh, when we stopped at, the, at our preferred gas station in Lima because they do the job for you. I had to put, had to put that in there. <laughs> it's a nice bonus. It was apparent that one of the two guys working was new in the job. I hopped out of my car and I started to explain the gift that they were both about to receive. When the experienced employee nodded in recognition, looked at the two bills, and indicated for me to give it all to the new employee. What? I can't believe this because he just became the giver. Hallelujah. And the new guy, he was so stunned, of course, and he recognized our church name because it was related to people who have known the Elam campus, but, but before either of us were married. So, even so, I still let him know that God loves him. Thank you, God, for knocking my socks off. Okay? Amen. One last quick one before we get in the video. Two weeks ago, past yesterday, I was feeling upset that, ha that I hadn't given my offering away yet. I had prayed during this time, and, and a neighbor down the street had come to mind. I don't know her, her that well, but have seen her outside, and we've chatted on occasions. I knew her name was Nat Kathy. I asked God to help me run into her during one of our, uh, my morning dog walks. That finally happened today. She was getting out of her car, and I called to her. I told her about the reverse offering. I had received $40 and made it 50 and tears came to her eyes, and she hugged me. She's 75 years old and told me that Thursday is her last day of working for the Monroe County District. Also, her lawnmower, lawnmower had recently broken and was hoping to get it fixed. We talked for about 20 minutes about the goodness of God, and I asked her if we could pray together. And so right there in the driveway, we held hands and prayed. It is much better to give than to receive, and I feel so blessed. Thank you for this opportunity. I want to put aside money, uh, money as you said yesterday, to give away to the right person at the right time. Let's give our hands for the amazing things that God's doing in our church. It's so great. Think about this. You know, you're, look, think about your neighborhood. There's someone holding hands, praying with their neighbor in the driveway. What a cool opportunity. What a cool thing. And so if you haven't shared your story yet, please do it. Elamlife.church backslash reverse. Or you can fill out a card too as well. So if you've missed the first few weeks of the series, um, for the teaching portion, we've been hearing from Robert Morris, the pastor of Gateway Church in Texas, by video. We wanted to hear from him because he's an expert on this particular uh, topic. And so please direct your attention to the screens. Look at verse 1. It says, Then six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, where Lazarus was, who had been dead whom he had raised from the dead. There they made him a supper, and Martha served, but Lazarus was one of those who sat at the table with him. And then Mary took a pound of very costly oil of spikenard, anointed the feet of Jesus, and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the fragrance of the oil, but one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, who would betray him, said, why was this fragrant oil not sold for 300 denarii and given to the poor? This he said, watch verse 6 very carefully, not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief and he had the money box, which was the offering box, and he used to take what was put in it. He actually took from the offering. Isn't that amazing? And that's why he made that. Okay, so... When, when I read this, I thought of two questions. Why would Mary give such an extravagant gift, such a generous gift? Why would she do that? And I'll explain to you later how extravagant it was. And then the second question is, and why would it get Judas upset? There are two hearts displayed here, a heart of generosity and a heart of selfishness. And I want you to notice what revealed each heart giving. That's what revealed. So when I say, am I generous, I, I put it in the first person so that when you say it, you're asking yourself, and when I say it, I'm asking me. Because to be honest, sometimes I am, and sometimes I'm not. I still battle with this. 
So let me tell you some things about generosity, right? Here, three things. Number one, the enemy of generosity. The enemy of generosity is selfishness. Now, by the way, we're talking about generosity and selfishness. Let me, let me just say something. Generosity begins with a G. Selfishness begins with an S, all right? Listen, God is generous. Satan is selfish, just so you can always remember, all right? God's generous, and we're, we're all born selfish. We are, but we're born again generous. That's the great news. We just have to renew our minds. We really want to be. If I said to you, you, you really want to, don't you? You say, yeah, I, I, I want to. I just don't see how I can do it, or I'm strapped, or whatever, and we want to help you do that, but we, I want to be generous. Uh, I said we're all born selfish. If you think about it, one of the first words that a child learns to pronunciate very well is the word mine. 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 And, and a child learns to say it at such a pitch that it will hurt a nerve that you have in your back. It, you'll be watching the game or something, and here's what you hear from the other room. Mine, 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 mine. You ever heard that? And, and, and a, a parent has to get up and go through the house and find that sound. And you get to another room, and it's normally a younger child pulling something from an older child, right? And the younger child is saying, mine, 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 right? Okay, let me explain something to you. There is a place where every parent comes to when we don't care anymore about justice. <laughs> we care about quiet. <laughs> we don't care whose toy it is. We just want it to be quiet. And so we end up saying something like this to the older child, give it to her. And the older child says, but dad, it really is mine. Give it to her. She has things of mine too. Give it to her. <laughs> is that right? So we, we've got this word mine. That's why I think, because God wants us to understand and grow out of this, listen to me. God actually uses that word mine when he refers to the tithe. He says, it's mine. Don't touch it. Now, this is an amazing story because when it talks about Judas, he makes this statement. Why wasn't this sold and given to the poor? You ever heard that statement before? Can I just remind you who originated that statement? Judas. Why wasn't that sold and given to the poor? We, we do this a lot because we, we see the extravagance or the perceived extravagance of someone else. By the way, let me give you a def definition of extravagance the one who has more than you. That's extravagant. Now that neighborhood there, that's an extravagant neighborhood until you get a raise and move into that neighborhood. Now that one's not extravagant, but now that one's extravagant. That's extravagance. See, here's what we do. We always want to point to someone else so we don't have to point to us. Now here's another thing that amazes me about this uh, story in the Bible. It says Judas had the money box or the offering box. Uh, J Jesus was in traveling ministry. This was an offering box. People gave offerings. We know that from Scripture. People gave offerings to him. Okay. <laughs> so what's shocking to me is who gave Judas the money box? Well, let me ask you this question. Who's the leader of this bunch? Okay. So do you think Jesus knew he was a thief when he gave him the money box? <laughs> I know he knew because two years before this, two years, Jesus said, did I not choose you 12 and one of you is a devil? He knew. So why would he do this? Listen, he didn't do it for Judas to fail. He did it to give him an opportunity to pass. See, God will test you, not tempt. James says God tempts no one. He, not tempt you. And he also provides a way, of temp, uh, a way of escape every time you're tempted. But God will actually test you in your finances and give you an opportunity. Now, isn't it amazing, too, that God says, uh, that the Bible tells us he was a thief, and God says in Malachi, the people who don't tithe are 
stealing from me? Okay, he used to take what was taken. He, he took stuff, took money out of the money box, the offering box. Okay, some churches have boxes, some pass the plate, some have a little bag. It really doesn't matter what the method is of giving. But here's, let me, uh, the question for you. Is there anyone that would take money out of the offering? There's none of us. None of us would do that, would we? Okay, let me ask you another question. Anyone, is there anyone that would keep money in their account that actually belongs in the offering? Wouldn't that be the same thing? All right, so the enemy of generosity is selfishness, all right? Here's the number two, the extravagance of generosity. The extravagance of generosity. The reason I say extravagance is because God's a generous God and God gave an extravagant gift. Remember, his son. It's pretty extravagant. And there are several extravagant gifts in the Bible. Lots of them. I could name several of them. Uh, David gave 21 billion in today's economy, what David gave to the temple would be equivalent to 21 billion with a B. That's extravagant. Um, I'll tell you another extravagant gift a lot of people don't think is extravagant, but Jesus said it was extravagant. The widow gave two mites. See, it, it's not the amount. It's the attitude behind the amount. This, uh, Mary gave 300 denarii. Denarii is the plural of denarius. The word denarius means a day's wage, a day's wage. I've had uh, students ask me, uh, how much is a day's wage? I said, well, what are you talking about, 10 AD or 30 AD? Because it'd be like the minimum wage, you understand? It changes. So 300 denarii, you would work about 300 days a year, so that was just common vernacular for a year's wage, a year's wage. So let me ask you, would a year's salary, whatever your salary is, for you to give that in one lump sum, would that be extravagant? Sure it would, for all of us, right? Okay, let me ask you something else. Would that be extravagant to pour on someone's feet? Because that's what she did. And Jesus said, she actually did this for the day of my burial. This is the only anointing, by the way, that Jesus received because it was too late when they put him in the tomb to anoint his body. So they actually came back with 100 pounds of spices on Sunday morning, you know, first day of the week, to, to uh, anoint his body because they couldn't anoint it before they put him in the tomb. Uh, so they come back that morning, and it says they came back early, but um, Jesus had already checked out. <laughs> so that's extravagant. So um, let that's an extravagant gift, but could you give a gift to God that would impress him? I'm talking about an amount now. Uh, the one who owns everything. The one who, by the way, uh, paves his streets with gold. Not, not because he's trying to show off. Uh, it's just laying around. So God paves his streets with gold. He has 12 foundations to the new Jerusalem, 12 foundations, and all of the foundations are made of precious stones. By the way, new Jerusalem is 1,380 miles long and 1,380 miles wide and 1,380 miles high. And again, it's not because he's trying to impress anyone. He just got a bunch of diamonds and rubies laying around. And his gates are made of pearl. And if they're that high, they could be 1,380 miles high. The gates, I don't know how high they are. So could you give something to God that would impress him? Absolutely, did you know you could? Uh, 2 Corinthians 8, 5 says, they first gave themselves to the Lord. Uh, the scripture in the Old Testament says God rejoices over you. You know what that word means? It means he jumps up and twirls about. He jumps up and down and twirls around. See, it's not the amount. It's the attitude. It's that you give him your heart. And don't tell me that he has your heart if he doesn't have your money. Because Jesus said, where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. So actually, 
when God does get our heart, he gets our treasure. Um, there are three levels of giving, by the way. If you don't know this, and I've done lots of study in the area of giving, three levves of giving. And I saw this years and years ago, probably 20, 25 years ago, uh, tithes, offerings and extravagant offerings. And nearly every uh, gift you see in Scripture falls under the area of a tithe, an offering or an extravagant offering. Did you know though, that most Christians never get to the first level of giving? You know how many Christians last year tithe 10 percent? of their gross income to their local church, undesignated, by the way. The, by the way, the reason that it's undesignated, you can't say I want 5% here and 3% here and 2%. The reason you can't designate your tithe is because it doesn't belong to you. And people do want to designate money because they want to control. Can I say that again? Because I've seen it a lot. I've seen a lot of people try to buy me. If I give a big gift, will you do this? I just go and answer it, no. No. So you can't designate. So you know how many Christians actually give 10 percent of their gross income to their local church? It's between five and seven percent. 93 to 95 percent, let me say it this way, of all believers never even get to the very first level of giving. Here's the great news, though. If you ever get to the first level, you'll get to the second and the third, because the first level breaks the curse and opens the windows of heaven over you. <laughs> And let me just tell you, when God does give you the opportunity to give an extravagant gift, it'll be the greatest thing. You will look back on it for the rest of your life, thinking we gave this we, it was such a joy for us to do that. So here's the, the third point I want to share with you is the reward of generosity. The reward of generosity. Uh, now this same story that we read in John 12 is also in Matthew and in Mark. Let me read you one verse from Mark. Mark 14 verse 9 says, "Assuredly, I say to you, wherever the gospel is preached in the whole world, what this woman has done will also be told as a memorial to her." Okay. Notice I said the reward of generosity. Um, she was rewarded. Where Jesus said, "Wherever the gospel is preached, this is going to be told." She, she, she got a reward, but she didn't come to give her, get a reward. She just came to give. I asked you, well, why, why did Satan, I mean, why did, why did Judas, why was he so upset about this? Well, we know it's because he was a thief. That's why. And stole from God. Why, though, did Mary give such a generous gift? Let me answer that question. Because two months before this, her brother Lazarus had been raised from the dead. See, generosity comes from gratitude. Grateful people are generous. Well, let me ask you something. If one of your family members was raised from the dead, would you be grateful? <laughs> and do you think that might change the way you give to God? I think it changed. By the way, when I say one of your family members, let me just remind you, all of you who believe in Jesus have been raised from the dead. Because Ephesians says we were dead in our trespasses and sins, and he made us alive. We were buried with him and raised to walk a new life. But I want you to understand that she did not come to be rewarded, but God rewarded her. God always rewards generosity. Now, let me, let me give you the definition of generosity, though. Generosity is when you give expecting nothing in return. Selfishness is when you give and think that God owes you something. That's selfishness. Generosity is when you give to not get anything back. But here's the amazing thing. God always rewards that. Uh, Hebrews 11 verse 6 says, Without faith it's impossible to please him, for he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. This word rewarder is a, a Greek, comes from a Greek word that's only in the Bible one time, only in the New Testament one time. And it's, it's a five-syllable Greek word. And nearly every syllable means, when you put them together and all the, from the root and all, means to pay what is due. But there's one syllable that changes it. And it means to reward with extravagance, to give more than what is due. It's like if uh, someone lost his wallet and you returned it, and instead of giving you a $50 reward, he gives you a $5,000 reward. He said, well, there's only, you know, $50 in the wallet. 
this is, this is too much, okay? He's not rewarding the amount that you returned. He's rewarding your honesty, the attitude of your heart. See, it's not the amount, it's the attitude of our heart that God rewards. And he always re rewards. You have to understand, uh, uh, let me say a double negative grammatically. God cannot not reward you. He's going to reward you if you give with the right heart. Here's the reason why. Because it says God is a rewarder. He is. This is something he is. In other words, God can't lie to you because he is truth. He can't lie because he is truth. He is truth. He is a rewarder. Lots of times God has blessed us financially. But there's a difference between being blessed and being rewarded. He blesses us with finances. But Genesis 12, 12 tells us what his reward is. He said, I'll reward, your reward will be me. I'll reward you with myself. He rewards you with himself. In other words, it affects every area of your life. So I'm going to tell you something that happened, and then I'm going to give you the rest of the story that I've never told you. Okay? I shared one time this with you, a testimony, but I've never shared the rest of the story. Uh, there was a single mom in our church, and she was, uh, the Lord was dealing with her about tithing. And I shared the message about the $1,000, and this was a few years ago. I shared the message about $1,000, how much tithe, and that week she'd made $1,000, and it was the first time she'd made $1,000 in a week. And I'm sharing about $1,000, and the tithe is $100. And she's just getting more and more convicted that she needs to put God first in her life. So at the end of the service, she gets her checkbook out. She writes out a check. And while, when she's about to put $100, the Lord said to her, add $20. And she said, Lord, this is going to be a struggle for me to do this. A tithe. And he said, well, yeah, but I want you to give an offering also. And she said, I sat there and struggled and struggled and struggled. Finally, I wrote the check for $120 put it in the offering box before I left. She's walking out to her car. Now, I need you to know this. There, was, there is a man in our church that for years and years and years has carried $100 bills in his wallet and gives them to people when God tells him. He sees this woman walking to, his, to her car, and the Lord says, go give that woman a $100 bill. So he reaches in his wallet, pulls it out, and right beside the $100 bill was a $20 bill, and the Lord said, give her the 22 and he said, um, Lord, I give $100 bills. <laughs> you know, I've been doing this for years, and, this is, and the Lord said, no, you obey. That's what you do. And he said, when you give her the other 20, she'll know why. Now, isn't that amazing? She writes a check for 120. There's a guy that gives hundreds, but he gives her 20. So I tell this story to the whole church just a few years ago. I tell, I tell all of you. I go home, and that night we'd invited the kids over for dinner. And it was just shortly after my daughter had come back to the Lord. My daughter lived a, a double life for a while, and I've shared that with you, and she shares it in, when she speaks. But it wasn't very long, and I was so grateful for my daughter coming back to the Lord. So all the kids come over, and my daughter says, can I talk to you for a minute? And I said, yeah. And so we went in my office. She gets these tears in her eyes, and she says story you told today about the man that gives the hundred dollars away I said yeah she said that's you isn't it I said yeah sugar that's me and just so you know by the way I didn't lie to you guys I just said there's a man in our church and I'm, <laughs> I'm in the church okay but I just didn't want to say it was me I just Wanted to just, I wanted the emphasis to be on what God had done. And so I said, why? Why did you think that was me? She said, because the whole time we were growing up, when you started turn, telling that story, I was remembering all those times that you would get out of the car and you'd go talk to someone and you'd put something in their hand. She said, I had probably 10 or 15 memories come back to me. She said, you were given $100 bills, weren't you? I said, yeah. And my daughter, who'd been away from the Lord, looked at me and said, Daddy, I want to be like you. 
I want to be like you one day. That's a reward. Wow. As someone who has a few kids and, and you know, they're not even teenager, teenagers yet, so some of you who've already had teenagers are like, get ready, right? There's some ups and downs in, in, in our lives as parents, and to one day have my son or daughter look at me and say, you know, Dad, I want to be like you. They said, what a testimony. What a, what, a, what a beautiful moment that happened there. What a gift. And, and they want, they're saying, I want to be like you, not because, you, you know, Dad, you're the best businessman or you're the best, you know, uh, they're saying that, saying, because how you love God and live for him generously. That would be a, well, that's a special, incredible thing. I just want to talk about a few points that he, uh, he shared real quick. We're briefly going to go over that. The one is he talked about the enemy of ger- generosity. Again, if you're taking notes, these are things that we want you to take this home and to, and to uh, think about this and pray about this. The enemy of generosity is selfishness. And then he told us to remember God is generous. Satan is selfish. So true. He talked about <clears throat> the extravagance of generosity, right? Could you give a gift to God that would impress him? And we feel like we can't because God has everything, you know? It's hard enough to shop for, uh, you know, like my father-in-law or mother-in-law who has everything. You know, God, think about shopping for God. He has, he has it all, right? And he talked about how you can give God a gift that would impress him, and that is giving yourself, all of you. Just like the story of, of the widow who gave very little, but it was because her heart attitude, she was given everything. And that's what um, our Father wants for us. <clears throat> and he talked about the three levels of giving or tithes, offerings, offerings, and extravagant offerings. And the third thing he talked about was the reward of generosity, how our God is a rewarder, right? And God always rewards. So sometimes, I don't know about you, just to, just to, just to throw this out there, is we can, in the back of our minds, think, I'm going to hold on to this money sometimes because I, what, basically the idea is, what I need to pay bills or I need to what I could do with it is better than what God can do with it that's I mean really that's what sometimes we we really if you break it down that's what we're thinking and we have to fight that thought and I would say think about it what he said he said God is always he always rewards generously that is our father and God cannot not reward you right God cannot not reward you. He's, he's, he is a giver. So I'm hoping and praying that this series is hitting home for you, that this is speaking to you, because this is who God is. This is how he functions. This is how he designed it to work. Church, you can trust him with everything, including your finances. The last couple of weeks, we talked about the principle of tithing, giving the first 10% of our income to the Lord. And we even, a few weeks ago, uh, did a tithe challenge. The tithe challenge cards will be available when you leave today, and they're available also at Elam Life Church backslash tithe challenge. And so this is just real quick what this is. If you don't tithe, and you're coming, you're coming, and you're hearing God and God speaking to you, God, I want to, I want to be, I want to give you what, what is yours. I want to put you first in my, in my finances. Begin giving 10%. You can sign, sign up, like I said, online of everything you make and follow it through faithfully for the next three months. At the end of three months, Elam Life Church, if, if basically if you don't feel like God has blessed you and it hasn't benefited you and it hasn't proven to be a blessing to you and your family, we will give every penny of that tithe back to you because we know and believe that, that God is gonna bless you. We want you on board. We want you to see the blessings in your life for your children and your family. And so you starting now, you have to sign up. Give, give 10% if you're not tithing. We've already had multiple families in our church start this. It's powerful. And we want you to be a part of it as well. And so I don't know about you, but I'm ready, God. To, God, I want to give you everything. Amen? God, I want to give you my whole heart. I want to give you everything. We're just going to go back into a time of worship. We're going to sing the chorus of this song. And I just, I'm, my prayer is that, that you would let him speak to you. And like I said, the feeling sometimes can be you can get dug in on this. And I'm just asking, would you, let, would you ask God, would you let him speak to you during this, this time? 
and say, maybe there's an area of your life that you realize that, may I haven't been generous in this. I know he's speaking to me. I can be more generous, Lord. And so let's stand up together as we sing this one last time.
Show us your glory. Show us your glory. Let every burning heart be holy now. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Let's do this, Eagle Life Church. Let's take some bold steps forward with the Lord as he speaks to you about being faithful in this area to live a generous life. Lord, we just ask that you would come today. Move in this place. Lord, we want to be more like you. We want to be more like you, Father, and you are, you are, a, you are generous. You, are, you give extravagant. You gave your life. And so, Father, we ask that uh, as your sons and daughters that we would be generous, that we would live lives that we, we give extravagant, Father. Help us, Lord. Help us in a world, Father, that, that basically it, it wants to teach us to hold on to everything. Father, no, we want to give it back to you, Lord. It's yours. We thank you, Lord, that even if we had a mindset that was wrong for even many, many years, or where, regardless of where we're at, today's a new day. Father, we can live for you. We can, we got, we can give you everything today fresh. God, your word says that you separate our sins from the east and the west. Father, there is no condemnation in Christ Jesus. And so, Father, we can walk out of here with a new heart. Father, wanting a, a with a fresh perspective to live for you. In the name of Jesus, we thank you for that. Would you move? Would there be testimonies from the front to the back in this church, Father, of, of people living generous lives and the blessings of people coming saying, God touched me because of this person. God touched me because of this person, Lord. Thank you. Jesus, just move. We love you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. If you're here and uh, you would like prayer, we're going to invite the ministry teams to come up. Just want to make sure we're not, we're just sending out an invitation. Maybe God is wanting to work in an area before you head out. We're here for you. We want to pray with you. Maybe there's something that, uh, a healing or so, something going on in your life, your family that God wants to, that you're, God's putting your heart to, to pray for right now. Uh, even the business of cookout for camp and everything else, we want you to know that we're so thankful you came and that we're here. We, we'll pray for you. We want to want to lift those things up to you. So we want to invite the ministry teams. God bless you guys. Have a wonderful day. Stop by for cookout for camp and grab some food. Hope you have a great rest of your day.